Hi, good, mo good morning, good afternoon. We're right at high noon, so both count, right? Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I hope that uh, you've been enjoying the day so far and that uh, we can talk a little bit about resumes by design. Uh, resumes and the strategy and job search strategies, because I think they all kind of blend together. Uh, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Demetria Moran, and a couple of things just uh, to hopefully make our uh, time together um, beneficial for all of us. Uh, if you would uh, care to share your first and last name and email in the chat. If you like, you could share it only with the organizer if you feel more comfortable that way. Uh, we'd like to send you a sample resume checklist. And um, I would like to invite you to turn on your camera and join me too. If uh, you notice, the um, Zoom has the capability of putting a back screen. So, you know, you uh, uh, come across the camera as being in a place that you may not be in, as you may see right now. I'm really not in the Career Development Center on campus, but um, actually at home. So uh, I'd invite you to do that if you feel comfortable. So back to the presentation. Oops. Here we go. Okay. PowerPoint. And ooh, everything has this nice little glitch. So how are we doing so far? Cool. Let's move along. Okay, I introduced myself. Quick quiz, right? What is a workshop without a quiz? The average time spent by recruitment managers for analyzing a resume is, you could put your answer in the chat, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, 15 or six. And the next question, what is the number one reason for the rejection of over 76% of resumes? Unprofessional email address, typo, too long, aesthetically not pleasing. How are we doing, Emily? The votes in? Cool. The answer is, for the first question, the amount of time, nowadays it is six seconds. A quick glance. And for the question number two, the rejection for all of those reasons. So you definitely want to keep that in mind when doing a resume. Let's uh, take a pause and, and take a step back and think about what is the purpose uh, of your resume? What are you trying to accomplish with your resume? To get a job, to get an interview, or all of the above? all of the above. Cool. Thinking about a resume, the first thing I like to think about is what do I want to do? What do you want to do? What matters? Your personality traits, your personal values, what things are important to you, uh, what's your work style when we're talking about personality treatment? What's more important to you? Is achievement or advancement? Is it pres prestige or precision? like things to be right or um, important, intellectual stimu stimulation, you like to figure things out, uh, solve problems, you uh, value having, you know, time, the freedom of time, uh, money matters, it always does, whether you want a lot of it or not so much, and what your long-term goals are, all of that also matters. What do they call what you want to do? It's, it's very important when you're thinking about looking for a job, right? There's not all jobs are like accounting where the job title is quite obvious. Some places to look, I've included Handshake, which is Rick's online job portal. Uh, you can actually um, find out what jobs are called by looking at a lot of the job postings. Reading the job descriptions is very helpful. In Handshake, you can also access Vault which again is a career resource library where you can read up on different occupations, find out what days in the life of are and what uh, you know, um, employers look for in those types of roles. And the ONET, which is an occupational encyclopedia, which includes information about all occupations, uh, what the day-to-day -day is like, um, what skills are required, what kinds of education and so on and so forth. Another great way to learn is to network, is to talk with professionals, right? Find out what they do 
and what they like about what they do. I've highlighted on this slide the LinkedIn, Rhode Island's LinkedIn page. And as you can see, I've highlighted the alumni page where you can learn more about where alumni work, what types of roles they have, and what they do. Research through network. When you find someone, what should you ask them? You can ask them about, their, about the profession, about what kinds of people are hired for the professions. And when they're describing that, are they describing you? Does it seem to fit on, uh, fit on you? Uh, what are the trends in the profession? You know, uh, what, what, what's coming around the corner? And what's essential to career advancement, right? So we're not, as we're building a career, we're not just looking for the next job. We're looking how to build our career. Um, you can always ask the employers what's important to them. I like to... I like the three, the summary here of the three things that employers are really looking for. While here they're talking about interviews, knowing what a company is going to be asking you or an organization, I think will help inform your resume. So thinking about, can you do the job? Do you have the capabilities? Will you love it? Will you have passion? Will you put all of yourself into the, the role? And well, while I wouldn't call it tolerate, I would say, is it a good fit? Do their, does their mission align with your values? Would you want to work for a company or an organization as such? Other ways to, to, to be thinking about it is also well, what employers are looking for in terms of skills. What do they need people to do, right? These here, excuse me, are the National Association of Colleges and Employers uh, have surveyed um, employers across the nation and have come up with a weighted average of the skills that are most sought in um, employees and especially in entry level. So the, here you go is a long list, which you know we have available in the office. You don't have to worry about trying to jot all this down. But as you'll see, there's some very basic skills, you know, being able to communicate, uh, working in a team structure, which is something you do a lot in, in most of your courses. So a lot of these things are things that you've done. It's about attaching them to, you know, specific examples. But we'll get to that in a little bit. All right. You want to think about what's your value proposition. What are you presenting to the employer that's a value? That's important. You want to emphasize the value you could bring to the organization, okay? Now, let's get to the resume. Again, I took a little um, digression there to capture what I think is most important in the resume, and that's you. What's important to you, what you feel uh, you want to be doing, and what types of positions or occupations are the best fit for you, okay? And now we're going to think about how do we create a document that actually captures you, but presents it in a way to the employer that they'll want to, to meet you and see you as the person that can help them get the job done, all right? It's so a little bit of context. And I apologize because I really can't see you. I just realized that when I'm sharing my screen, all I can see is my screen. So I'm sorry if I um, can't really see you now. A resume. It's a skills-based document designed to attract employer's attention and get you to the interview. It highlights the skills that are relevant to the job. And then we'll talk later about there's such a thing in my book as a perfectly fine resume and then there's an effective resume. So we'll talk more about that in a bit. Okay, let's get started because we're talking about resumes, right? What do you need? These are the things that you'll need, your ingredients, if you will. You'll need a job description, a posting, right? Something that you're looking at, um, whether you're applying currently or you wish you had. You'll need all of your experiences and you'll need a bunch of action verbs. And we'll get to this in a minute. Okay. So the skills on your resume may come from your education, your internships, your prior work experience, involvement with sports, with your community, community activities. You get the, 
idea, right? They can come from a lot of different places. They're not only from paid working experience. Now, everything I think takes a little bit of a strategy, right? No different than your papers, your projects, your presentations, everything that you've been doing up to date in college has been, you know, there's always a little bit of strategy in it, right? What do I need to do to get an A on this paper versus what's the assignment? Let me get it done, right? So with your resume, I would argue no different. With your job search, no different. How are you gonna make your pitch? How are you gonna prove the case that you can do the job that you're applying for, right? You're applying for an accounting position. How can you prove that you can do the tasks and you can manage the responsibilities for that role? The idea would be to tweak your resume to highlight the skills that you have and the experience that you have that match, right? Um, and one of those strategies would be to tell is is telling versus selling right you can tell you can say you observed the use of teaching techniques right but if you really want to sell your skills you want to show how they're relevant to the role and this in the case of teaching you can see the example goes a little bit uh deeper right and really tries to pull in more of the um, qualities in, of the role, right? More of the, the tasks at hand, right? So observe the use of teaching techniques to meet visual, I'm sorry, the needs of visual, kinesthetic, and auditory learning. Because in teaching, all of those things are important. So when you know, they're developing, you're developing a lesson plan, you have to be thinking of all of these things, right? And then another example from nursing, monitoring patients. Simple as that. Well, you could always, you know, really try to highlight the relevant skills, right? You're monitoring, you're updating, right? Uh, you're showing uh, the progress of treatment, right? All of that in one bullet. So how do you get started now? I, I wanted to kind of show you the, the resources, the types of things you should be thinking about. You can start with making a list of all your paid and unpaid experiences, right? Start in, in reverse chronological, include everything in your draft. And I would say, save that and keep it throughout your career. Having a master resume draft document, whatever you wanna call it, is really gonna be a very useful thing uh, throughout your career because you would simply keep adding whatever you're doing to it. And when you need to create a resume for that next job or the next career move or for your boss's job, you can go back to that draft and recreate the case that you're trying to make. If you're kind of stuck, I mean, I know sometimes I like to see what others have written. I, I would go to even something like the ONET, which is again, the Occupational Handbook and the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS here, I have the websites. They list the job descriptions for pretty much every job there is. So if I need ideas, I usually kind of go there to get some ideas of, of, of what to put in my draft, okay? The verbs, the verbs uh, communicate action. They make people think of people doing things and they're also transferable. When you coordinate, you coordinate. The rest is details, right? You could have coordinated the work schedule for a team or a crew of 10 at McDonald's. While it won't be the same as coordinating nurses um, on, a, on a hospital floor, it's still coordinating a schedule, right? And if that's what you have, that's what you're using. Okay. Again, we're still in the draft. We're just putting down everything that we can think of and we can polish and, and, and decide what we're going to keep and, and leave uh, later on. Another thing to be thinking about is as you're writing your draft, you, you might write down the task you had, which was you plan social events and philanthropic initiatives to boost morale, for example. Maybe that was the reason, or maybe it was to raise money, right? If you want to highlight the skills in it, you can go to your verb list and kind of uh, insert those in here. So the same thing changes uh, as you see here, planned and executed meetings, social events, philanthropic initiatives, resulting in high level of community engagement, right? 
Um, those are, you can do that for some of the items. You don't have to do it for every single thing that you're listing on your resume there, on your draft. Again, we're still in your draft. So write the, and also think about, again, this is a strategy. Think about writing the resume from the point of view from your future career, not just the job you're applying. Again, this is a strategy. I want an A. I'm not, I don't want a C. C is fine, but I want an A. What do I need to do to get the A on that paper? This is one of those strategies. How do I not only get the job, but show I have potential to grow, right? Again, a lot's gonna rely on the research that you did. Remember a few slides back where we talked about networking and talking with alum and looking up on the ONET about occupations and then vault, learning more about careers, right? All of that's gonna feed into this you know, and, and, and really help you build a resume that's gonna show this, for example, you know, that you have the potential to grow. So, you know, researching the job functions, uh, noting down what are those transferable skills, the coordinating, the managing a team, you know, what are those? The competencies, you know, um, you need to know how to pivot Excel tables or, or, or something along those lines, right? looking at kind of the functional skills um, within uh, that type of experience, right? And again, the, I'm uh, reinforcing some of the places that you could get some more ideas on this are the ONET and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They, they actually list the skills that you need in that occupation. Okay. Looks count, content counts, content and format go I think hand in hand. If something looks nice, people are gonna look at it. If you have a nice looking document, professional looking, people will probably want to read it, right? If it kind of looks hard to read and really hard to follow where the information is and it does they really have to figure out what it means, probably not gonna look at it for more than six seconds, right? that you have about six seconds. So format counts. When we move from the draft that you've been thinking about, right, that you've been putting together, that doesn't matter. No one's seeing that, but maybe you and maybe a career counselor or a professor, right? The final, what your resume looks like, you should quote unquote, dress it up, right? It's gonna make a difference. I'm going to walk through now kind of a, a sample resume, an outline, if you will, just to give you a visual. Okay, so name, address. Nowadays, you can even skip the address. You don't have to put an address on. You definitely do want to put ways that they can reach you. A phone number is enough. Um, and an email address, a professional email. You do keep your RIC email address, uh, thanks to the alumni, the, uh, alumni services. They've uh, made sure that that's uh, something that all uh, graduates uh, retain. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that it's a professional sounding. I also um, think that a, an objective, while it's hard to write, is essential. Um, I think it's no different than starting a presentation without a title or without a topic or not telling anyone what you're going to be talking about for the next half hour. So the same thing with a resume. If you don't put an objective, what you're telling the employer is look down below and if you see something you like, let me know, right? The employer is going to look at your experience and they're going to assume whatever you were doing is what you want to keep doing because you didn't say otherwise. Okay, objectives can be very simple, right? They can be, you wanna teach elementary education. You could have fields of interest, accounting, comma, auditing, comma, finance, right? Your education, again, simple, very clear, your school, location, your degree, when you obtained it. Um, you could put a concentration or a minor, Again, these are things that we're going to think about when moving from the draft to a, a polished, what are you going to end up keeping? And those are things, you, again, you can work with if you want, you know, in the career office, those, that's, that's a lot of what we do. GPA, if it's great, you've put it there. If it's not, 
it's, it's kind of like a PowerPoint. You don't have to say it, right? You don't have to put it there. All right. Some have certifications, some fields, right? So teachers have teacher certifications, nurses, nurses have to have licenses and so on and so forth. Some don't, uh, some it's not critical. Um, business students get the Bloomberg certificate. If it's not relevant to the specific career, don't need to put it up at top. You could, but you could put it at the bottom as well. As you can see, there's a lot of moving pieces in a resume. Again, like a PowerPoint, you put things in an order, um, hoping that it's a logical order for your reader and they're seeing things the way they would expect. Again, you notice I'm also using, for my labeling, I'm using all caps and bold. That's not the only way to format a resume, but it's just one way. And you notice it does make things pop a little bit more. So I hear this just happens to be an example from student teaching and I'm highlighting the student teaching, right? Again, company, location, job title, dates, and then the bullets, right? And here I'm given a, a contrast of, you know, the bullets we talked about earlier, tell versus sell. Okay, and really ramping it up there. Okay, so you can see there, there's, there's plenty of room to, to grow and develop your resume, and it's always versions, okay? Work history, sometimes that's a great way uh, to, to group your other employment, the uh, work that you may feel um, is jumbled in with the relevant experience, you could always pull it out and have it separate. So it's just an example of, again, the ways that you can modify a resume and move things around. Other thing, do not underestimate community involvement, volunteer work, campus activities. Anything that you have done is experience. The how you present it is what's you know, um, important, but you are trying to prove you have certain skills. So anything you have, you have done, is game. It can go on your resume. It's all in matter how you present it. If you put a label over it, you've called it community involvement. It's not under work experience. No one's going to misunderstand, right? Again, just some examples here. All right. And you could choose to just list something or if you're really trying to, you know, communicate a skill or show some experience that you've gained, uh, maybe it's about working with a population right? Here, you know, working with children, that, that could be a thing that you're trying to prove. Again, the organizations and clubs, at a very basic level, they show you're doing more than you have to. You don't have to do these things, but you choose to do them. And for an employer, they see it, a person who does more than they have to, well, why wouldn't they want to hire someone like that? Right? Okay, skills. I love having skills sections on resumes. I think many employers also too. It's a nice, concise section where they can quickly see, you know, what types of um, competencies you have. And there I would say, um, technically, to keep it kind of, you know, brief, not too long and lengthy. If you have a language, that's a strong advantage. Um, add that. If you have additional languages and, and just simply the the level of proficiency, Spanish, basic, Portuguese, fluent, you know, something like that. Um, put your computer skills there, there, you know, people kind of go back and forth on this. There are a lot of people who say, oh, you don't need to put, you know, Microsoft Office, everyone knows Word. Um, I would disagree. I would put it. I would put, you know, good, uh, good knowledge of Word, comma, PowerPoint, basic, uh, I'm sorry, PowerPoint, um, basic or something like that. Talk about other technology or industry specific skills, right? Those are definitely things that can also pop on your resume, but leave the soft skills for your cover letter. You know, that you're great with teamwork and you have strong communication skills. My personal perspective is those come across much stronger in a cover letter, okay? So when we're looking back, we just kind of walk through the, the resume. A couple of things we want to be looking at as you kind of do your, finish your draft is look, is the final, the length, right? The paper you're using, the contact details. Are you using re reverse chronological? 
And I'll just say here, because if I ask, I really can't see you in your answers. Um, reverse chronological. The reason why resumes are reverse chronological are probably similar to when you're presenting. If you save the best for last, you might not have an audience to hear it. So again, you're, what you've done most recently is hopefully the best thing that you've been doing, the strongest thing, has the most relevant skills. Uh, tense, verb tense, I would keep things either all simple present, you assess, you coordinate, you act, um, versus uh, mixing your tense. You could also start to have a simple present for what you're doing now and then simple past for things that are in the past. Again, it's a decision, but you need to, one thing you definitely want to make sure is that it's consistent throughout because those are the things that will pop uh, for an employer and they'll just see it as inconsistent. The format, again, the visual, what something looks like can make all the difference. Again, consistency there uh, shows, uh, really pops when someone's looking at it first time. Your layout, the sections, the order. I remember once an employer told me the first thing he looks at is the layout of the resume, the order of the sections, because it helps him understand how that person thinks, how they organize information. Hmm, so I thought that was very interesting and very helpful to know. Uh, strategies, remember, you know, moving from a perfectly fine resume to a very effective, you're always trying to think of ways of presenting your information to get the audience to agree with you that you can do this job, that you have the skills, right? Again, my motto, from perfectly fine to effective, you know, decide what's relevant based on that particular career field or job function, right? Select a format that helps highlight your, your key experiences. I would also give a piece of advice, save format last. It's no different than kind of getting locked into a PowerPoint design that three quarters of the way you realize it's not working and then you have to start all over again. Get feedback from a career counselor or, a, or your professor or your internship supervisor, you know, someone who works closely with you. And the more opinions you get, you'll have a better working knowledge of your resume. Make revisions. Re, uh, repeat until you have a document that's a good professional representation of your experience. And here's where I would say, work it very much like a PowerPoint, right? If you have worked the information to make the case that you can do the job you're applying for, right? That you're able to do that job probably better than anyone else, then you have your presentation for the interview. You have everything you need for the interview, okay? I uh, have to mention very quickly cover letters. Recruiters will usually go to the text after they look at your resume. Resumes are easier to read, quicker to read, so why would I go through a long cover letter first, right? Want to end up keeping it to one page after you've drafted it, you get it down to a page. It's an opportunity to make a positive impre impression, right? But it's not about what the job will do for you because I don't know anyone who'd be interested in hearing that, or maybe they would, they probably would be interested, but they'd be more interested in what you can do for them, right? It's an expansion of your resume. It's all the things that you really can't say in your resume, in a resume format, right? You're, you, it's an opportunity to create, as I say, illustrations, pictures, you know, ways of, of that the employer actually can almost see you doing the job, right? You can talk about your experience versus listing it. Okay, demonstrate your enthusiasm and qualification. That's where you can get all excited um, and, and passionate about why you think, you know, you, you want to work for their organization, right? It's a, an example of your professional etiquette, right? The language helps them see you as a fit in their organization. And, you know, simple things like to whom it may concern, you can replace with dear recruiting manager. Okay. Always keep in mind, what are the employers looking for, right? And within the range of what they're looking for, think about how do your values and interests play into that. Some opportunities that we have, make sure you're on handshake, 
that is where employers are posting. They're reaching out to us. They're asking us, how do we connect with RIC students, with RIC graduates? How do we, how do we, how do we? We drive them to Handshake so that you can find them. Um, job fairs, we have some virtual job fairs coming up soon. Um, oops, I'm sorry, I copied the old dates. Huh. Now, what, what do you say to that? Okay, well, there, um, I'll send the new dates. Uh, Emily will help get that word to you. They're all the week of Memorial Week. So that would be next week. Um, so it'll be in the same order. It'll just be the dates are different. <laughs> Can never review your material enough. Interviewing. In a resume workshop, why am I talking about interviewing? As I mentioned before, your resume could be your presentation in the interview. It has everything you need to answer every question you can get in an interview. Um, but you have to be starting from a place of, I believe I can do this job or most of the job, right? Or enough of it to make that argument that they should hire me. An interview is never a test, it's a discussion, how you can do what they need done and why they uh, might want to hire you. Right. So the whole thing will be about dis exploring the job description and how you can help um, meet that need there. The questions, everyone gets worried about, well, how will I, you know, at the end, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Will I have any questions? Think about what do you need to know to decide if you want the job or if you're on the job day one, what do you need to know? to make it through that day, through that week, through the month. Okay, that's usually helpful. On Friday, there'll be a presentation. Melissa Carvalho will be talking more about interviews. So top on, again, searching for jobs, handshake, um, employer directories, professional organizations, agencies, list, state listings. There's a lot of places to look for. Um, with our the, with the Career Development Center, there's access through Handshake, job fairs, employer visits. We'll be hosting coffee chats. Um, so there will be a lot more virtual programming available. So hopefully that will be helpful to you all. Um, again, a lot on the job search skills, applying to graduate school. And we work very closely with the alumni office to bring presentations such as, as today's um, close to you. Contact us for assistant. Again, your, your handshake can be set to uh, automatically notify you for jobs that meet your criteria. You can make an appointment by calling us. Um, we also have virtu um, we've also set it up on handshake, so you can also make appointments via handshake. And we have virtual appointments now, so you know, no commute and no worrying about parking. <laughs> 